Hey, Tacoma Comics here, and it has been a while since I've done some edited videos. <laughs> there won't be a lot of editing, but I'm not going live because YouTube's doing this thing where it buries your lives and make them hard to find. I got the time. It's summer. I'm going to show you some stuff. This is a G. Willow Wilson appreciation video. Should be a new comic book day video, but that was Wednesday. It's Saturday. So here we go. Um, G. Willow Wilson came out with two big books this week, and if you know anything about me, you know that I'm a super fan. Um, love G. Willow Wilson. Love the work that she does. Miss um, Marvel is one of my favorite characters. Uh, and so, you know, I'm really happy when there's a day where there's two different books released that she's worked on. First one I'm going to talk about is The Hunger and the Dusk. Uh, G. Willow Wilson wrote it. Chris Wild Goose is the artist. Um, I don't know. Do you pronounce that M. Sassy K.? or Miss Assy K, Miss Asik, I'm going to go with M. Sassy K, uh, is doing colors, inks by, or letters by Simon Boland, Diana Sousa on color assistant, Maggie Howell editor, Jake Williams assistant editor, and Nathan Wittick as the production and design uh, person. So this is from IDW, which is new. I don't think G. Willow Wilson has ever done an IDW book. Um, pretty darn cool. Uh, really beautiful artwork in this first of all the writing is uh flawless and that is to say it's flawless but not exceptional um and i don't mean that in like a, a, a criticizing her uh this is an establishing issue right first issue get your main characters get your story let the readers know what they're in for and then go from there and that's exactly what she does so basically you've got a quasi medieval um setting you have uh, humans and orcs. They've been at war for years, but there's also another group called the Vangal. <gasps> Mythical creatures who come and kill everything, so the humans and orcs have to put aside their differences and um, make nice with each other. As you see here, human and orc making nice with each other and, uh, you know, gather together to, to uh, vanquish the Vangal or something like that. And in order to do that, the orcs have presented the humans with a healer to go with um, this troop called, I think, the Last Men, who are um, one of the fighting groups in this of humans in this group. And the guy who's the head of the Last Men is um, this gentleman here, whom I believe is going to be the love interest of the orc. And they uh, they are not one of the best fighting groups. And the guy's like, why'd you want me? We don't even know when to run when we're losing the guys like that's exactly right you don't run when you lose you stay and fight and that's why we chose you yada 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 so you know there's um right as this is happening <laughs> the van Gogh's attack and it's just a couple uh sequential artwork panels here to show you how good the art is um really really well done beautiful book uh i'm loving it you know this is a a typical story i would say um so far and I don't mean that in a negative. Again, uh, it's all about execution, right? So G. Willow Wilson sets it up really nicely. The artwork is gorgeous um, and just really leaves you kind of wanting more. Uh, so I am definitely down with this series. Going to put it on my poll. I think it's kind of nice that the, um, the back of all the covers have the, I believe this is going to be the, uh, is this the cover for? Nope, this is just an inverted uh, brown scale version of this cover. That's really cool. So yeah, excellent book. Really nice to see G. Willow Wilson on another one. The last one that she did was this kind of intergalactic take on Amazon, which is, I, I thought it was just awesome. Um, so that is Hunger in the Dusk. Really great book. If you're looking for a new good read and you like kind of fantasy stuff, I can't suggest it any stronger. Uh, right there, you have my gosh, I'm going to get the... Oh, Cliff Chang, um, who did Paper Girls, among other stuff. I think that's a B cover. You have a 1 in 10, Lee and Yuck. Uh, my LCS is an awesome, awesome place, Stargazer Comics, but they could not get the 1 in 25 or 1 in 50, and I think maybe even a 1 in 100 um, for me, which is fine. They got me the 1 in 10, and I really appreciate it. Shout out to Stargazer Comics. This just, oh my God, this cover is awesome. So this is our human, this is our orc, and she's a healer, um, which is going to come in very handy. 
and then I've got a handy place to get somebody to do a sketch for me. So I'm really excited about that as well. Now, the big one, Fallen Friend, Miss Marvel. Now, I'll tell you right away, um, G. Willow Wilson's not the only creator on this. There's tons of great creators. Uh, you know I'm a huge Miss Marvel fan, and I was excited for this because it looked kind of cool, but I'm like, you know, the worst kept secret in comics right now is Miss Marvel's not dead. She's coming back, or she'll be res resurrected at the gates of Krakoa, and she'll be a mutant. And then um, they just announced that Miss Marvel, the new mutant, will be the new book. Um, co-written by Iman Balani, which is like, oh, that's awesome, right? That's freaking awesome. So really excited for that. Um, that got announced probably because the writer's strike is, or the actor's strike is starting and there's not going to be any appearances uh, to promote. So I think that's why they leaked that news. But anyway, this book came out and, you know, it's about the death of Miss Marvel. And like I said, I thought it wasn't going to be very impactful because... We know she's coming back. I was wrong. It's very impactful. Um, beautifully written. And for Miss Marvel fan like me, who's been with her since the beginning, um, this book blew me away. So we have the A cover here, which I thought was pretty cool. We have the B cover here, which is an homage to uh, Jim Starlin's uh, Death of Captain Marvel. And also, Stephanie Hans did a take on this for one of the Thor issues about five, six years ago. We have the 1 in 25, which I don't love. Um, just don't love that style. Um, it's done well. It's just not my favorite. And then we have, I don't know if this was just a C cover or what, but this blows me away. It's a little story here. Got this from my LCS, Stargazer Comics, like I said. Has that tick right in the middle. I hit them up on the socials, and I was like, hey, it has a tick. Can I come replace it? And they're like, sure. So went for a walk with my son this morning, not intending to go to the LCS, but I passed by there anyway. So I went in to pick it up. I still have to take this one back, um, but it's super hot out. You can see the sun peering through that window there. I don't have it covered up perfectly. Uh, so... <laughs> I got this one, and let's see if you can see the uh, fingerprint on it, basically right by my finger. I held it like this. I should have gotten a bag and board, but I bag and board my own stuff. So just a 10-minute walk from the LCS back to my house, I was holding it like this, and I totally, like, my finger came out all black on the tip, and, um, <laughs> and I got a nice fingerprint smudge there. So I'm going to go back and buy a third copy. I'm crazy. I know. Anyway, let's break into this and see what's got Tacoma Comics so excited. And I'll tell you, right off the bat, um, this is a story done in three parts, okay? Uh, G. Will Wilson writes the first part with Takeshi Miyazawa doing the artwork. Now, those two, and Ian Herring doing the colors, I assume, um, those two, or those three, worked on... The original Miss Marvel run um, that G. Will, when I say original, I think it's volume three or four that um, came out in 2014, the first Kamala Khan volume, if you will. So that was really awesome that you had those um, creators on part one of the story. And then in part two of the story, you've got Mark Wade and Humberto Ramos uh, working, and they were the ones who wrote Miss Marvel and, and, and created Miss Marvel and the Champions, the new Champions, in 2016, uh, which was also a book that I loved. And then, um, it, if you know me, you know I wasn't a great fan of G. Willow Wilson's second run in Miss Marvel. There were some highs and lows there. Um, didn't love it as much as I loved the first run. But then, what Saladin Ahmed did in Magnificent Miss Marvel I guess in about 2020, uh, blew me away again. And so they've got Saladin Ahmed and Andrea DeVito working on the third part of this story. So absolutely awesome. Um, and it starts off with a, uh, a quote, which I assume is a, a Muslim quote that's, that's been translated. I'm not 100% not sure, but that would be my, my assumption there. Um, and it starts off with Sheikh Abdullah in the mosque and a bunch of people coming in. 
uh, going through this ceremony, Muslim ceremony of, of mourning, basically, for somebody who's died. In this case, it's for Kamala Khan, not for Miss Marvel, even though some of them know her as Miss Marvel. Um, it's mainly family. You see, um, I'll just show you, Zoe and Nakia and Bruno and Michael, which is really cool because I kind of had forgotten about Michael. Michael is uh, Bruno's girlfriend when uh, Kamala couldn't commit or didn't want to commit to um, being girlfriend with, with Bruno because, you know, they want to keep that t romantic tension there. Uh, Bruno started hanging out with Michael, who's like a super smart inventor like the rest of them or, or something like that. So uh, it's called Katim, I guess, K-H-A-T-M. And they ter take turns reciting um, sections of the Quran. So it, to me, you know, I'm not religious at all, but sh sitting Shiva sounds like a very similar process. So it's really beautiful. Um, I was absolutely in tears. Uh, her parents show up and they're like, wait, she might not be dead. We don't know for sure. Wink, wink. Um, but then they, they go through with it. And then uh, I don't know why this hit me so hard. This one right here. I don't know if you can tell who that is, but that is none other than Logan himself coming in. Now, if you remember back in 2014, 2015, Miss Marvel number seven of that volume, uh, Ms. Marvel was running through the sewers and teamed up with Wolverine, who was actually dying at the time. It was part of the Wolverine, like three months left to die, two months left to die um, storyline that was going on in his own comic. And they fought like killer crocodiles, <laughs> which was cool. But what made it awesome was that um, Ms. Marvel is also a super fangirl. So she loved the Avengers. She loved Wolverine. She, you know, had wrote her own fanfic. Um, so like she was partnering with one of her heroes, which was just really cool. And for him to come in and be part of uh, the ceremony to, to mourn and honor her was really, really more meaningful and mournful than I expected it to be. Like I said, there, I had tears during this issue. And then he sits down and, and talks to dad and he's like, assalamu alaikum. Dad's like, I don't know you. Are you a friend of hers? And where did you speak such good Arabic? Um, he goes, no, um, I, I learned it in Madripoor. <laughs> Father's like, Madripoor? <laughs> don't know what that is. So anyway, one of the things I love about this is the artwork just looks exactly like the artwork from the original series, which is great. I didn't need to see Red Dagger there. Um, that was, uh, I thought, a little over the top, perhaps. Um, but then this one. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. That got me. Captain Marvel showing up in that shot at the end there. Look at that. Hey, that was awesome. Absolutely love that. So then what happens is now we get a champion's tale right here. Which also was really cool. And if you look at the artwork here. Umberto Ramos, just like the champions, looks just like the champions. They got Amadeus Cho in his brawn outfit. You know, they've got uh, flashbacks now to when Miss Marvel stood up to the Avengers and she's like, we are forming our own group. And then the fight over leadership. And then Amadeus Cho becomes a dick, kind of is a dick. That's his character. Um, and he starts like getting mad at, at, at the vision. And he's like, you don't understand. And so she turns off her motion ship. That's a Star Trek reference. Um, she allows herself to feel whatever. And, and like, look at this. <laughs> the actual horror of realizing what it means to lose somebody um, hits her really hard. Hit me really hard then. Because Viv is probably my second favorite from, from this group. Um, and they got Locust. And they've got um, Amika, I think, Snowguard. Uh, a few different ones. And so... Uh, Braun says mean things to Viv, and Viv takes off, and Braun takes off, chases after her, and then it ends with just like. It ends with this, you know, turning it off again and, and being allowed to feel, and just powerful stuff. If you're a fan of this, powerful stuff. If you're not a huge fan, um, it's well written, but it might not be as impactful. But for me, it was like. Oh, it hit me right there. Um, and then the final story uh, was written by Saladin Med. I'd say this is perhaps the, the weakest of them or the one or maybe that didn't resonate as much with me. Um, I like it because it's, it's uh, written and translated. Uh, 
there and um, they're going through the ceremony and reading of the Quran, I believe. Uh, Miles or somebody has turned on their translator chip because, you know, every superhero has a translator chip. You get these two page spread here between Tony um, and Steven and, uh, you know, Tony's like, you could bring her back to life. He's like, oh, let me, rem I need to, you know, be reminded of the dangers of meddling and things like that and what it can do and Tony's like, you don't have to tell me. He's like, I'm not telling you. I'm telling myself. That sort of thing. Like, you know, obviously it's dangerous. This I didn't need. I did not need to see Captain America here. Uh, but he came in. He said some meaningful words. And then there is a little fight outside, which I thought was kind of interesting with just like a generic bad guy who sees all the superheroes. He's like, oh, I'll leave. <laughs> so he leaves. Um, and then it kind of ends with Spider-Man. Uh, whom, if you know how she died, she died in ASM 26 in the current run, and it was meaningless. It was a stupid issue. It was a stupid death. It was kind of just meaningless. They just needed to kill her some way, so this is how they killed her. <coughs> and Peter's not sure what he's going to say to her parents, and eventually um, he says, you know, Mr. Mrs. Khan, your daughter was my hero, which I thought was pretty cool. And that ends the issue, except... Last page, QR code. What happens when you click that QR code? I'll show you next, though you can probably figure it out.